Hi, I'm Shar Jurgensen, and thanks for giving me the opportunity to show you how may I made my Civil War quilt sampler. When looking at the quilt behind me, it is a sampler uh, quilt that I did of all different fabrics, and it's called a Civil War fa uh, quilt sampler only because of the fabric, not because of the shapes that I used in it. When you look at the quilt, you'll see that every block is made a little bit different. I challenged myself when making this quilt. Uh, the challenge was that I wanted all the blocks to use just five shapes in them. So it's using the uh, small half square triangles, uh, smaller squares. Some of the blocks have the larger pieces and now I can't quite spot them. I see the card tricks down there has a larger half square, but it's just the same squares over and over. Uh, this one has a rectangle in it. When deciding to, new, to do this quilt, I made a mistake and I didn't choose the border fabric first. So I was having a little problem keeping all of the blocks uh, to look good together. So I suggest when you make your quilt sampler that you choose your border fabric first, not halfway through the project. With this particular quilt, I decided on the blue border and I'll show you that in a little bit. And that way I got control of it again and had a palette to work with. The other thing that I struggled with in the beginning was I thought I was going to have every single uh, quilt block have a different background in it. Had a problem with that too. I couldn't find enough of the same value prints to, to keep control of the quilt. So I decided then to just use the one background fabric. I didn't choose the alternate block fabric until all of the blocks were done. That was a struggle for me because what I thought looked good in the store didn't look good when I got it home. So take your blocks with you when you go shopping. I actually had all of the alternate blocks cut and then decided that I didn't like them so I cut a second set. That's a good way to build your scrap stash, I decided. The other thing that was fun, and I'll show you a little later on in the program, how one block led to another. So when you're making the different units for the blocks, you can twist and turn uh, the units to create even more blocks. I did end up with some real favorite blocks. This one was one of my favorites. The Friendship Star at the top ended up to be a favorite, as well as this one over here. I had a lot of fun with that block. And I'll show you how just by using just that block alone, you can create just a quilt from that single block. The quilting on this uh, sampler was done by Joy Erdman, and all of the feather work in the alternate blocks is freehand feather work that she's done. Beautiful, beautiful job of quilting. Also, she did a continuous curve around all of the patchwork in the pieces. Does a very, very nice job with that. She did nothing, though, in the light background, so that made that pop out a little bit more. The next quilt that I want to show you before I talk about the, uh, the fabric that I used was the quilt that Joy actually made herself. Off to my right is a sampler that she did. Now hers looks totally different from mine because she has a lighter background fabric behind each of her pieces. You probably can't tell when looking at it through the camera's eye, but each of her background pieces on her blocks is a different fabric, and that's what I set out to do and wasn't able to accomplish it. Um, the same idea, the same type of blocks were used. Her background is a little bit darker than mine. And again, she's done a, a beautiful job with feathers in the background. It just gives you a little idea of the different ways you can work with colors. Now down in front of me is the palette. Uh, I'll start out by first talking about the border fabric that I used. And like I suggest, is that you pick the border fabric first. 
this dark blue fabric I fell in love with because it gave me so many colors to choose from. It has a nice mustard in it, a nice ivory background, some red tones, and then of course the blue. From there then I was able to work um, and choose some of the fat quarters that I had collected. I didn't use all of them. Uh, then I was able to add my uh, whoops, not that one, my background fabric, which is this one right here. And this one for the alternate blocks, I didn't choose until all of the blocks were done, like I said earlier. After I have decided on the fabrics that I'm going to use in the quilt, what I did then was I cut all of the pieces. And I happen to have a... Uh, a little art bin it's called and it has dividers in it and I had cut all the shapes the squares half squares uh, and rectangles from all of the shapes and I was able to divide them in the art bin to keep them organized so when I started to uh, create the blocks on my design wall I didn't have to stop and cut each individual piece the shapes that I'm using uh, to do the quilt sampler are up in front of me. There are just five shapes and like I said earlier you have two squares and two half squares. This is a three inch finished square. The smaller square is an inch and a half finished. So four of these would equal the larger square when finished or two of those the rectangle and then you have the half square triangle for both the large and the small um, square. You'll notice that on the back side of the templates I have put uh, fabric grips and that keeps them from sliding when I'm cutting um, the shapes from the fabric. All of the templates have a letter on them so when you refer to the patterns in the book uh, you don't have to wonder which shape that you're going to use. The 29 page uh, book in full color shows you all 42 of the blocks that were used in the quilt sampler. I give it to you in the fabric and then I also show the block broken apart uh, in the units that you'll be sewing together to make your quilt sampler. These happen to be 9 inch finished squares. You can do 12 inch or 18 inch, there's many different options that you have when working with this set of templates. A little later in the program I'll show you how you can break, break apart uh, just one of the blocks and create other ideas. It comes complete with the cutting and the sewing instructions along with a sewing test that you'll be taking when using uh, these patterns. At the end of the book I show you many other quilts uh, that you can also make and we're going to at the end of the program show you those quilts and here I show you other block sizes like a six inch, a seven and a half inch, a nine, uh, ten and a half inch, twelve inch blocks and then ending up with more quilts that you can create that I'll show you at the end of the program today. All of the pattern shapes have the quarter inch seam allowance included in them so you don't have to worry about uh, adding that. Well now I'm going to show you how I cut my fabric and I'm going to stack these fat quarters up or what I call scraps left over from my fat quarters. Remove them to the edge over here and we'll show you how we now do some of our cutting. The background uh, or the light color in the quilt, I used a lot of those. And to speed up the cutting, I have bifolded the fabric up on top of itself so that everything lays up on the uh, cutting board. You don't want your fabric dragging behind when you're turning your mat board. So we'll pull these pins out and we'll get our first cut to straighten our fabric. I like to use a uh, 28 millimeter rotary cutter 
to do all my cutting. We're going to line up the edge of the ruler with the edge of the fab, the folded edge of the fabric over here. And I'm going to straighten this edge. Even though I had cut from it before, I have disturbed the fabric, and so I want a new edge to work from. So moving my hand along on the ruler so I have control of, of the uh, ruler so it doesn't slip. Now when you turn your board, do not disturb the fabric. Let your ruler and your fabric all travel together on the mat board. Now I'm going to cut some half square triangles of the bi bigger shape. I'm not going to cut all of them, but I want you to see how easy it is to cut. I slide the ruler over to match the edge of the template. And follow down and make sure it's, it's straight all the way down. And the first cut I make when I'm cutting, I always go backwards and then forward. I have more control that way and my fabric does not move uh, when I'm cutting. So now I'll remove that fabric and we'll start cutting the pieces. Now I'm going to lay this up on here and each time I cut this I will get four of these triangles. Whoops, I didn't cut it in far enough. I didn't get the selvage edge removed, so I'm going to move it in a little bit farther. You want to remove that. You do not want to have that in your quilt. Now, just like when I cut the strips, I want to turn the board. And I'll work my way across that strip of fabric. It's so fast and easy to do and you do not sacrifice your accuracy when when doing it this way and each time I'm doing this I'm getting uh, four of the triangles now sometimes I layer my fabric as much as six and of course it would go even faster so you just work your way across that strip of fabric and that's what I did with every one of the fat quarters I cut each of the shapes from each of the fabrics and then I put them in the art bin so I was ready to start playing with the different blocks. So that's how easy it is to cut and I won't finish going to the end of the strip because we've got other things that we want to cover. Next I'm going to talk about uh, the sewing and the construction of the blocks and I'm going to start out by showing you uh, how to make the friendship star. That's the first one that I'm going to work with. I think I forgot to mention at the beginning of the program that you can do miniature as well as large. Now the sampler is done up um, of all nine inch finished blocks and I prefer the smaller pieces but for those of you that want to go faster and, and, and feel like you're getting there faster Use the bigger triangle or half square triangle and you'll have bigger stars. The same, you'll have the same pattern, it just will be done uh, a lot faster. And these were the smaller ones. So to make uh, this particular pattern, I have it all laid out on a design wall ready to show you. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the construction of the block. I have the sewing machine set for a scant quarter inch seam allowance. It's important to sew with a scant quarter inch seam allowance so you make up for the fabric that's used in the seam line. It isn't a lot of difference but it is enough to make a difference in the uh, final quilt. So keep that in mind and I do show you how to set the machine for a scant quarter inch in the book. Um, as well as I give you a sewing test. So when starting out to sew this block, you're going to start out by sewing uh, two pieces together, or two of the half square tri triangles together. 
So we'll pair them up two by two. Now move this out of the way so you can see better. I always start sewing on an anchor cloth. That way my first stitches on, sewn on my patchwork are as strong as the middle stitches sewn. So pairing these up and then I use a stiletto to control my fabric. I find that it's hard to control with my pointer finger. I can get my stiletto where I want it to be controlling the fabric. If you've ever had your seam go off to the right or the left when you're sewing, it's because you can't keep control of the fabric to that very last stitch. And then I like to chain sew to save time. So we'll send a few of these through and show you how you can save time and thread by chain sewing uh, your patchwork together. Now, um, when working on a block, what I would suggest you do is look in the book and pick the block that you're going to work with and then lay it out on a design wall like I'm working on so that you can keep control of what you're doing. Uh, it's better to look at it on a design wall than laying down. Um, I find that it's much easier to get the nicer coloration and it's just easier way to work. Okay, after your pieces are sewn together, you want to press the seam open. And most of my seams, I would say everything in this particular quilt was pressed open. So what I do is I lay it down on a hard surface, not at the ironing board, but you do it in, on a hard surface and you finger press that seam open, both on the top and the bottom. And then I like to press it with a lot of steam to get it to lay really nice and flat. Now I'm going to show you uh, how I, there's actually a couple of ways you can trim off the ears. I prefer to lay the template down on top of each of the pieces and trim off the ears. I find that I have uh, better accuracy that way. In fact, I need to move it up on a small board so that I can turn it as I work. It seems like a little extra time spent, but you'll save time later on in the quilting process. So each time I do this, I have trimmed off the ears and I have now a perfect square to work with. The other way that you can do this is to take the two pieces that you've sewn together and just cut them at a 90 degrees on this corner and this corner and then uh, finger press it open. I have done that a lot of times but I do find that I have a little bit of, uh, I have better accuracy by doing it the other way. Now you probably can't tell the difference between the two but once in a while I'll have an extra thread or something that I have to trim off to keep that perfect square. After you have sewn the units together that you want to work with, you line them up on the design wall uh, by your sewing machine. Here I have laid out the units as they're going to go together. And I'm going to pick a couple of area, we'll actually sew this one row together. So these two are gonna go together and we'll start putting that uh, friendship star together. Again, starting on an anchor cloth always, and then guiding it with the stiletto at the sewing machine to keep control of your fabric. And then I had a second anchor cloth, which I have misplaced. We'll just cut this one off. Now we have the first two units sewn together. After I have pressed it open or finger pressed it open, and by the way, when you finger press, 
be aggressive when you're doing it. Don't just um, gently rub on it because you want to lay that uh, seam down flat. You'll notice here that I have a quarter of an inch here and a quarter of an inch here, and that will be included in the seam when the rows are together. The next piece that I'm going to put together will be this one right in here. In here you have an angle going this way and this way. And to get the perfect intersection when doing that, and this is really one of the um, important tips in this process, you insert a pin right on the seam line through the top, a quarter of an inch from the edge, and again from the bottom and snug those up and I leave that pin standing while I put another pin at an angle and this time um, I let the pin come out just on the edge of where that pin was standing and now I'm ready to sew that seam. Again, guiding it with the stiletto so that you have nice straight seams all the way through. And again, ending up on an anchor cloth. Now when I'm doing this, uh, and I'm not actually taping, I would be chain sewing a lot and it would go a lot faster. Again, we'll press, finger press this open and then we'll press it with steam so you can see how nice that lays open. See how nice uh, that lays and you have a perfect match here and there again you have the quarter inch seam allowance. I won't sew all of the units in all of the rows but I'm going to jump now over to this one and show you how I connect the two rows together. So laying them down in front of you so you can see how they match up, you're going to put them right sides together and I want to match this point and this point over here. So insert the pin right on the seam line through the top and through the bottom. Again, let that pin stand and hold it in place with a pin on the side. Again, over here, insert a pin right on the seam line through the top and through the bottom and hold it in place with a pin and then we'll sew uh, this seam. I use cotton thread uh, when sewing all my patchwork to match the content of the fabric I'm using. I prefer working with all 100% cotton to do all of my quilting. And again, on an anchor cloth, pull the pins out, and now we get to see if we have perfect intersections. Yep, because we pinned it right and took the time uh, along the way to, to do it accurately, we now have the pin perfect intersections here and here. The next row would be just put on the same and then you would have the finished block. And then to connect these two blocks, you would just put them right sides together and pin on this intersection, um, inserting the pin through the seam line on the top and bottom, again holding them in place while you sew that seam. And like I said before, you can do it in both the 9 inch or the 18 inch um, size and continue on and you'll have a beautiful quilt depending on which way you want to go. 
The next block I'm going to show you is one of my favorite blocks in the quilt is the little people. I call them my little um, friends in the quilt. And that happens to be this block right here. And that one you can do also with the large or the small shapes. I actually have the larger one to show you as well. This would be in the nine inch finished um, square and this one would be in the four and a half inch square. Now notice the difference between the two blocks. This one has a little more uh, going on in it. I've added some uh, another fabric in here for half square triangles where this one has just the one piece of fabric in the patchwork. When making this particular block, I'm not going to sew all of the seams, but you would repeat that same process where you, you sew your half square triangles together and trim off the edges like I did on the Friendship Star. But to make this top unit up here, what you're going to do is sew your half square triangle onto the little square. Now when sewing that seam, the seam does not start in the crevice. And that's explained in the book. It starts a little bit higher than, than you would think. And then that, was, that would be pressed open. And again, you would finger press it to lay it flat. Then the next piece you would add would be the next half square triangle and that time or this time the seam does start in the crevice so you start right in there and then you have this unit made and like the other ones you would press the seams open and at this point you can say oh maybe I should check my sewing and those three units sewn together would equal the large half square triangle. Then the next piece that you would sew together would be these two pieces right in here. Now when sewing this seam you want to sew with this unit on top because you want to sew directly over this intersection right here so that you have a perfect point when finished. So you'd want to sew from here to here, right through this intersection right here. Now when you get to this point, you want to trim up this square, just like I did the other one. You will lay the large square down on top, and you would trim off the corners, just like we did the other units. And once in a while, you'll find that you'll have a thread or two uh, that might be extra, which isn't very much. You can see that I haven't trimmed off very much, but it is enough sometimes to make a difference um, in the quilt. So that is the top of the block, which is down in here. Now next, you would sew this unit on to this side. Again, sewing with this on top, so you sew over the intersection um, that's visible, because on the bottom you have nothing to match on the bottom. And then this one would come on at the last. And here is your finished block. Now something fun with this block, when you get it done, you have a lot of options. You could use this block by itself, in a small quilt like I have to show you here. I used just that block and turned it into a little uh, quilt of its own where I have four of the, the little, uh, I call them little people, uh, separated like this. And these are four and a half inch finished squares. You have the option of the nine inch block the next one I'm going to show you with that same block is taking those, uh, 
Now this one is the one that has a little more embellishment like this one where it's got the extra piece in here. But here we have the four units that are actually used in the sampler that's in the quilt behind me. When building this block, it's a very simple block to do. Notice how we've done it in rows, just like we did the first, uh, the Friendship Star, where you have the rows and then you connect them together to get the finished block. But after you get this block done, you have some options you can change the whole look of that block by twisting and turning them and you'll have another interesting block to make for your quilt sampler. How fun is that? You can change the look of the block just by twisting and turning the units um, to give yourself another block to do. The next one that I'm going to show you how to make, and it, I don't have a name for it, but it's shown in the, in the book. These are different units that I have put together using the squares and the half squares with the larger square in the center. But you can have so much fun by just twisting and turning those units. And this is how you can create yet more blocks for your quilt sampler. How fun is that? So you have another whole quilt to work from or another idea. Or maybe you want to change out the center of the block by using half square triangles and then twisting them back into um, the way they started in the beginning. So you see you have many blocks um, creating, you can create many blocks from just the beginning of one. I don't know if I said that just right, but I think I showed it to you how you can um, move along and create yet other blocks. When Working with the quilt sampler, it seemed like one block led to another. And one day, uh, my granddaughter was here and she said, Grandma, can I play with your scraps that you have left over? And it happened to be a day when there was no school. And so I said, sure. Um, Avery is a nine, she's nine years old and this was her very first quilt project. And she made little simple nine patches. Now you could do that in the bigger version and do what we did in this next patchwork that I'm going to show you. Here we have combined a nine patch with the Friendship Star. This one happens to be the 18 inch block using the bigger pieces and this one is the smaller nine inch square that you see in the quilt sampler behind me. It's a simple nine patch combined with a scrappy friendship star. So it's really a changing out of the fabrics a lot of time and where you put the color that makes all of the different blocks um, that you create. This friendship star is nothing but scraps and it's a great way to use scraps and I know a lot of us I know when mom and grandma were quilting they had a lot of scraps to use up. I'm going to turn the block to the back side so that you can see how all of the seams have been pressed open all the way through and I find that by doing that your quilt will lay a lot flatter and when I send them off to be quilted, they like that because they don't have those um, bumps to go over when they're machine quilting the quilt tops. I'm now going to take you to a couple of quilts behind me. Um, on the left over here, you'll see what's called the snowball quilt. And this one has a simple nine patch like Avery did in her quilt, only this is a bigger nine patch. And then this is a snowball block. And when this quilt is full out, it looks, it's, 
That's the name of the quilt. It's called a snowball. And it's a very easy uh, quilt for a beginner to do. And this one I used plaids and stripes. And you'll notice that I wasn't very careful with the straight of grain. In fact, I kind of like it slightly off grain. It adds um, more, co it's cozier, I think. And this one was hand quilted. Um, here you'll notice that the plaids are a little bit off grain. The one below it is the Underground Railroad quilt. And this one has a path of uh, dark triangles going in both directions. And then it has a uh, path of red and a path of blue squares going in the opposite directions. Like I promised at the beginning of the program, I was going to end with some of the other quilts that are done with the Quilter Starter Kit. This one is a bear paw quilt, which my daughter Angie did, and I think uh, Brittany also helped. They first chose the border fabric with the little bears, and that gave them the palette to create the quilt. And then each of the paws are different colors. You'll notice the purples. Um, and the magentas, and they used a sashing of plaid to separate each of the blocks. I love this bear paw, it's one of my favorite ones, and I th think they did a really good job picking the fabric. The next quilt that I'm showing you is called Cherry Berry Baskets, just because the fabric spoke to us and that gave us the name. Um, the fabrics used in it were all from the same collection of fabric, which made it really easy to create this quilt. But I think what's unique about this one is it shows you how you can combine the small shapes with the bigger ones. So you have a miniature basket inside of the bigger one. The sashing between each of the baskets, of course, features the cherries here. And I love the bright yellow that separates along the outside edge for the side triangles and the corner triangles. This one was meandered throughout uh, the background. And around the cherries, there's done just a little bit of an outline to make them pop. A great job on this quilt. And it was created by my daughter, Angie. This is one of our most popular quilts done with the Quilter Starter Kit. Uh, it was designed by my daughter, Angie, and she used 42 different fabrics to create the butterflies. Because the templates are transparent, she was able to fussy cut and take advantage of some of the textures that she found in some of the fabrics. As you can see, every single butterfly is different. Then she was lucky enough to be able to find sashing. Every piece of sashing is a different colorway uh, throughout the quilt. Over the top of the butterfly, we have quilted, we have a stencil actually to quilt in the butterfly design to make it look more realistic. And the background uh, behind each of the butterflies it's like a movement of air going through the quilt. I just love this quilt, and every time we show it at a quilt show, uh, this one gets a lot of attention. Earlier on in the program, I was talking about this particular block that had the Friendship Star and the Nine Patch in it, and it was used in the quilt sampler. It happens to be one of my favorite blocks. But I decided I wanted to see what happened when you put it into a quilt of its own, just repeating that same block over and over. And I absolutely love it. I think it's one of my favorites uh, to repeat over and over. Then down below is the Friendship Star uh, that I showed you how to make earlier. And this is done in the bigger size star. Each star is a different fabric. The ribbon connecting them uh, is a lighter piece, and then um, you end up with a square in the corner. A great, great uh, quilt to make if you want to uh, have something for a beginner to do. It looks really nice laying on the bed. 
Well, I would like to thank you for sharing this time with me today, showing you how to make all the different quilts from the starter kit template set. Just remember that if you join us on YouTube and subscribe to us, you'll not be notified every time a new program comes on. Thanks again for joining me.